Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another set of videos. Uh, today, we're going to start talking about fixed assets. So, just to give you a glimpse of what you need to know how to configure a fixed asset in Business Central. Uh, so, con considering that the number series have been configured, if not, then one of the videos that I have about number, number series, uh, you can have a look at it and see how you can uh, use that number series and assign it to. Uh, fixed assets. Same thing with the journals that we're going to use for the fixed assets. So a number series would be required for that. So just trying to interlink the two uh, two systems or two modules that you need to be aware of. So uh, I have actually created a fixed asset. So in this demo environment, there were no fixed assets, but I have actually configured it to some extent. So I'm going to go and teach you how you can do that. So first going into finance and click on fixed assets. So you see that one of the fixed assets available, which I had uh, uh, configured uh, just a few minutes prior to this video. Now the few things that you need to be, uh, be able to configure before you can at least create a new fixed asset is the FA class code, the subclasses, the location. Uh, so let's go a bit deeper into the into the subclasses. So uh, if you just simply search FA subclasses, uh, you get a list of uh, uh, categories basically is where these fixed assets would fit in. So uh, as a predefined configured environment, uh, there are different subclasses that you can uh, select or you can create your own subclasses based on you, what your client's needs are. Uh, once you have that, uh, we will have to assign them the posting groups. So that's uh, one uh, thing that you really have to do because uh, in one of my videos I have actually discussed what the objective is for a posting group. It basically allows you to uh, directly hit MLGL account. So when you create a subclass, you need to create a, a FA posting group. So if I go into the details here, these are the FA posting group. Normally the best practice is to actually uh, name the posting group exactly what they are for subclasses just for easy purposes for when users try to create a new fixed asset, they know exactly which posting group to select because uh, it will reflect the subclasses. So in here, you have see a lot of different kind of GL accounts that are associated with different, um, different methods of doing things. For instance, when you do an acquisition, uh, so the acquisition cost account would hit this GL account, and then when you run the depreciation, it will hit this account. So, uh, so and so forth, you can have a look at the uh, different accounts and if you hover over it, it'll just give you a little bit more detail than what you need to know just for knowledge purposes and to convey to your client what exactly they're looking for and if there are no GL accounts associated with uh, for instance gain, uh, gains account on disposal then obviously you would need to create that and recommend that to your client so uh, I will uh, go to uh, go back to the fixed asset and uh, we're going to define the class code so if I just search the selected class, so it's just a fixed asset classes. Uh, the different kind, of different classes that I have defined, uh, mostly financial, intangible, and intangible. There could be more classes uh, based on the need for your client and the different assets they have uh, under their disposal. So you're not very limited to that, but uh, these are the three configured ones in the, in the environment. So with that, actually, you can, uh, con you can at least create a new fixed asset at this point. So when you click new, a card would open. And you would have to fill in uh, some of the information. So as you can see, FA000110 is the number series that has been assigned to this uh, fixed asset. So anytime you create a fixed asset, it will take an incrementation of either 1 or 10, depending on how you configure your number series. And then you have to give a short description. You have to select the class code. So in this case, I picked tangible. Uh, the subclass code, I picked it as property. And then the location is very important, obviously, where exactly is the, um, the actual fixed asset. So you also would have to have uh, the location as well. So these are the, some configured location uh, that were available in the system. Moving forward uh, to the depreciation book. So you need to create a depreciation book. In this case, I've just created a company. 
uh, but based on your client's need, if they require a different name or naming um, naming of a book, for instance, then you know you can always create one, and it's basically the bookkeeping for bookkeeping purposes, so just to differentiate between the fixed assets and other journals and whatnot. So in this case, we just kept the company. Uh, the posting group is property, so I had shown you the asset posting groups. These are going to be very important, otherwise you will not be able to perform any transactions or acquisitions for this um, fixed asset. Uh, there are different kinds of depreciation methods. So normally, uh, a lot of uh, clients that I've had uh, use straight line, but there are different uh, depreciation methods that you can actually go into the Microsoft documents for Business Central under fixed asset. It actually talks about the method, the formulas that they use in order to actually um, calculate the depreciation rights. So every time you run a depreciation amount for a particular fixed asset, it just takes into that account. And uh, you would also need the depreciation start date. Uh, so when uh, did you either acquired or when did you, uh, if you had it already acquired and when did the depreciation start? So that is a um, important field for uh, the calculation purposes. And same thing with the ending date. So the ending date is also a part of the calculation where uh, it takes that uh, end date and it will pop up the amount of uh, the depreciation amount. And the number of depreciation years is basically calculated on its own. You can also uh, you can also actually edit this, but normally you would just pick the start and end date and then it does the calculation itself. So at this point, uh, you actually have a fixed asset configured. You have everything that you need to do or that you need to have at the point at this point to actually acquire. So at in at this stage when you have everything filled out, so it will say you're ready to acquire a fixed asset. So you can either click on acquiring a fixed asset and then it'll ask you the amount that you need to, uh, that was required to acquire, or you can go into the actual journal itself and create it manually. So I'll show you what that journal looks like. So this is a fixed asset GL journal. So this is where all the acquisition and depreciation amounts uh, calculation takes place. So you can, either pick the fixed asset that you want to acquire or you can run that uh, automatic menu and it will just uh, drag you to this page essentially so i will stop here and i will not acquire the fixed asset i'll leave that to another video